Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the advanced OSPF topics of the router ID, how to configure passive interfaces, and default route injection. So we'll start off with the router ID. This is very similar to how the router ID worked for EIGRP as well. So our OSPF routers identify themselves to other OSPF routers using an OSPF router ID, which is in the form of an IPv4 address. It defaults to using the highest IP address of any loopback interfaces configured on the router, or if there's no loopback interfaces, it will use the highest other IP address. Loopback interfaces never go down, so the router ID will not change if you use a loopback. You can also manually specify the router ID. Best practice is to use a loopback or manually set the router ID so it won't change, it makes things more stable by doing that. So if you haven't used or you haven't configured a loopback address on your router, you can see an example here on R1, I've done a show IP interface brief, there's no loopbacks configured there. The highest IP address is 10.0.3.1, which is on interface fast 3 slash 0, so that will be selected as the router ID. We can verify that by using the show IP protocols command. So we do that and we can see that yes, the router ID is 10.0.3.1. 3.1. Next example, we do show IP interface brief, and this time we do have a loopback interface. We've got loopback 0 with IP address 1.1.1.1, so even though it's lower than the physical addresses, because it's a loopback, this is going to be preferred as the router ID. Again, we can verify that with the show IP protocols command. Now, if you've got a router and you've just got physical IP addresses on there, and you've already got OSPF configured, and then you configure a loopback afterwards, it's not going to immediately update the router ID. To change to the loopback, you would need to restart the OSPF process by rebooting the router or by shutting down and then restarting OSPF. Obviously, in a production environment, you would just wait until the next reboot because disabling and re-enabling OSPF would be disruptive. The command, if you want to manually configure it, is under the router OSPF configuration, router ID, and then the ID that you want to use in the format of an IP version 4 address. The address that you use doesn't have to actually be configured on the router. You could just make up a new address. However, it's more logical and easier for troubleshooting if you do use an IP address that is actually configured on the router. Okay, so that was the router ID. Next up is passive interfaces. If you configure a passive interface, it will be advertised in OSPF. So other routers will learn how to get to that network, but the interface itself will not try to form any adjacencies and it won't give out any internal information. So you see in our example here, we've got router R1, which has got a loopback interface and on interface fast ethernet two slash zero, it's connected to R6, which in our example belongs to another organization. So it's best practice to configure your loopbacks as passive interfaces. They're not physical interfaces, so there can't be a physical router on the other end of the link to form an adjacency with. So it's more efficient rather than sending out OSPF information, we'll make it a passive interface. Now we have to include it as a passive interface so that your other routers learn how to get to that loopback address. And we're also going to make Fast Ethernet 2 slash 0 a passive interface. Again, we want our other internal routers to know how to get to that network, but we don't want to be giving out any of our own internal information out on that link. That would be a security issue. So to configure this, we say router OSPF1 at global config, and then under the OSPF configuration, passive interface loopback 0 and passive interface fast ethernet 2 slash 0. 
if more of your interfaces are passive rather than active interfaces, then you can set passive interface as the default. So here, this configuration is going to do exactly the same as we did on the previous slide. We say router OSPF1 on router R1, and then passive interface default, which will make all our interfaces passive. Then we say no passive interface fast zero slash zero, no passive interface fast one slash zero, and no passive interface fast three slash zero, so that the router will form adjacencies on those links. So that was our passive interfaces. Last thing to cover is default route injection. And this is configured in a similar way as what it was for RIP. So the example here, we've got R4 is connected out to an internet service provider. So we configure a static default route on R4 with the command IP route 0 .0 .0 .0, 0 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, and the next top address of 203.0.113.2. We don't want to have to configure static routes to get out to the internet on all of our routers. We want them to learn that dynamically. So we're going to inject it into the OSPF process on router R4. The command to do that is router OSPF1 and then default information originate. It will look for a default route on the router and it will inject that into OSPF. To verify it, do a show IP route on your other routers and check that they do have a default route to the 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 network. This will show up as an external route in OSPF. Now, what an external route is, it doesn't mean it's come from somewhere outside your organization. What it means is that the route was redistributed into OSPF. What redistribution is, is when we take a route from another source, like another routing protocol, or it could be a static route, and we inject that into OSPF. Okay, so again, external does not mean it's outside. It literally means it was redistributed into OSPF. So this was a default static route that we've redistributed into OSPF. So it shows up as an external route when you view the routing table. Okay, so that was our advanced topics. Next lecture, we'll configure it in the lab. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.